Hi, I'm Pastor Scott Seeky from Amazing Grace Lutheran Church in Lawrenceville, Georgia. Thank you for watching this week's sermon. Enjoy. When my wife and I were young newlyweds, freshly in love, we decided to take a trip. We said, you know what? We don't have kids. We're both working. Let's go on a trip. Where do you want to go? Uh, let's go to Rome. All right, fine. Not Georgia, the other one, right? Let's go to Italy. Fine. So we picked a day in June, and that'll work, right? Random day in June. Let's go to Italy. Fine. So we go to Italy, go to Rome. Uh, we landed. Our luggage arrived a couple days later. And um, we're just walking around Rome, kind of, you know, jet lagged a little bit, you know, kind of tired, kind of a little addled, and just enjoying it, taking in the sights the first day. And we're both kind of like, wow, there's a lot of priests and nuns here. Whatever, I mean, it's Rome, right? So we're a little tired. The next day, we're kind of paying a little bit more attention. Man, there's priests and nuns everywhere, right? It was crazy how many priests and nuns there were. And there's just kind of this, I don't know, man, there was this energy, right? It was, it was this excitement. It was, there was kind of a buzz, and we're like, man, Italy's, Rome's amazing, because like, it's like Mardi Gras for pastors, you know? Like, because, you know, I mean, nobody wants it, right? Mardi Gras, we're... We're not the best at parties, right? That's not, what you, that's not what we're here for. But, you know, there's all these priests and nuns. And they're having a good time, and it's just this normal week in Rome. And Anybody here been to Rome and remember a lot of priests and nuns walking around? No, you probably don't, because it was not a normal week in Rome. There was a canonization happening. And, uh, and apparently a lot more people get canonized than I realized. There was 10 last year. Um, but this was a big one. This was a guy named Padre Pio. And Padre Pio was Italian, and he did his whole ministry in Italy. And so 300,000 people came to Rome for this thing. The crowd the day that he was canonized went from St. Peter's Basilica all the way back to the river. Which, if you've been to Rome, you might be thinking, wait a minute, there's a river near the basilica? There isn't. <laughs> It's, it's a half a mile away, but the streets were full. So it'd be like if, if the crowd started here and filled Lawrenceville Highway and went back to Ronald Reagan. I mean, that's how many people were packed in there. And that whole week, we're like, this is amazing. This town, it's like I said, it's Mardi Gras for pastors and nuns. It's awesome. And then they left. <laughs> and I'm sure Rome is like, if, if I hadn't gone during that week, I'd still think Rome was amazing. But once they were gone, I mean, you wouldn't think missing priests and nuns that would make it that much less fun. But I was like, oh, man. Because that energy was gone. No, I get it. I mean, they had jobs and they had places to go and things to do. But, you know, the same kind of thing happened on Palm Sunday, right? Jesus is coming into town. Pretty famous guy. Prophet, maybe the Messiah, people kind of trying to figure out what's going on. And people came from everywhere, right? They didn't just come from Jerusalem. I mean, Jerusalem was, was like the big town, you know? I mean, that was, that was the cosmopolitan place where you kind of went for everything. But people came from all over. They came from all over to be there on this day and to celebrate and to, to walk around and to, to, to lay the palms down in front of them and, and to sing songs. And it was this... It was this great party atmosphere, right? It's just celebration. It's awesome. The thing that gets me about Palm Sunday every year, though, is the thing that I think about when I think of what Rome is like, which is on Friday, these people are gone. And on Thursday, they're gone. And it's not just that they went home. I mean, I imagine they ran. What? Huh? You got arrested? I'm out. <laughs> it's nice while it lasted. Thanks for the fun, guys. I'm gone. Nobody wants to be associated with a criminal. Nobody wants to, to be part of that. We all, we all love a party. Everybody loves a party. You want to have a party. Parties are great. You want to be a criminal? There's a football player who's in jail right now. His name is Aaron Hernandez. Pretty famous guy. He's in jail for murder. Killed a couple of people, possibly three. Bad dude. Five years ago, people would line up to get his autographs. 
Millions of people would watch him on TV. They'd cheer for him. Now, I bet it'd be pretty easy to meet Aaron Hernandez. Probably have to show up in jail, be like, hey, I'm here to see Aaron Hernandez. He'd be like, a visitor, fantastic, he'd love to see you. But nobody goes. Nobody wants to see a criminal. Nobody wants to be part of that. I mean, think about it just for a second. Let's say you actually were arrested, convicted of something. How many people do you think would come? How many people would, would come visit you, see you? Probably not a lot, you know? Maybe your immediate family, spouse, kids, parents. My mom would come. I know that for a fact. My mom would come. My mom's amazing. But most of us, we'd probably never see each other again. Nobody wants to be associated with that. So, you know, it's, it's tempting to get on their case, you know, about these people who came to this Palm Sunday, and all their Fairweather fans, and I wouldn't be. But I think to an extent, we all are. I mean, that's kind of human nature. Now, if you want to get people to come, do what we did today, throw a party, right? I mean... It is not a secret how to get people to show up at Amazing Grace, right? Get somebody to cook some barbecue, right? <laughs> have some cakes, some dessert, maybe some of Anna's tamales if I let you have any. Um, people will show up. We're, Bob's going to talk about finances in a little bit. We're doing that in worship because if we said, hey guys, afterwards we're going to have a meeting, we're going to talk about finances. Y'all be like, oh, look at the time. We've got places to go. We're all, in a sense, Fairweather fans. I am. You are. It's just part of being human, I think. The thing about this week, and the thing about Palm Sunday and Good Friday, is that Jesus knows all of that. He knows what's going to happen. He knows what's going to happen on Thursday. He knows what's going to happen on Friday. He knows that here he spent three years Investing all this time, effort, and energy, ministering to people, loving people, caring for them, giving of his, of his whole self. He spent three years doing that, and now they're having this big party for him, and he knows that when he needs them on Friday, they're not going to be there. He knows that. And he does it anyway. He goes to the cross anyway. He knows. He knows what they're going to do. And it doesn't stop him. He goes willingly. And he knows all the things that you and I have done wrong, all the ways that we have failed one another, all the ways that we have failed him, all the ways that we're going to fail him. He knows all of those things, and he goes for us anyway. Because even though you and I and all of us are, in some way or another, a Fairweather fan, Jesus is not. He is not. He is there for us in the best of times and in the worst. He is there for us when we're having a party and eating barbecue and tamales. And he is there when we're in prison, forgotten and alone. Jesus knows all that we have done wrong. And he loves us. And he goes to the cross for us. Because he is not a Fairweather fan. He's there all the time. God loves you. So do I. Amen.